So you fine. mentioned Epic in that story. Uh, I'd like to shift to that, that, that topic. So let's talk about connecting to EMR, EHR, HIS. Uh, how do you start with a customer when approaching a massive system migration like that? So James, can you kick us off on, on that topic? Obviously, we need specifications and an idea of what's going to link to what and the different data types and that kind of thing. Um, but for me, it's sample messages, data's king. If, if you don't have the, the data, then you can't really start. Um, documentation and specification of messages from a supplier are always good, but it's, it's very rare that the specification matches the actual messages that come in from the system because it's always slightly tweaked for the particular site or um, a certain flavor is added or there is a certain thing that they have to change for some reason on site. Um, so for me, it's, it's always data and there's lots of different things within Rhapsody that allow you to, to take that data and automatically generate specifications and uh, things that Rhapsody actually uses. And so R Rhapsody helps you do the work if you have the sample messages. So. Yeah, for me, data is king. Give me the data and I can work with it. Um, specifications are good, but I trust the data. How about you, I to Yeah, I totally agree with James in terms of uh, specifications. There are times when they will, they'll set up specifications and that's good and great. And if they have to change them, they won't update them or they'll forget to update them. And what's actually coming out of the the, the source system is really important to us. It doesn't really matter what the specifications say. And so um, I wouldn't say that uh, they're never right. But in this case, I probably would say that the specifications are never right. And so, yeah, uh, CorePoint has the ability to take in those specifications, create our derivatives so that we can properly parse any HL7 message that comes out um, uh, out of a source system so we can properly grab that data and put it anywhere that we need to for any downstream system. So that, uh, that data is really important. And I would say specifically um, real data or production data is even better, if, especially if you're doing a conversion and you have that available because a sample message from your spec at the very bottom of your spec that has like half the fields populated, that's not really that you know, helpful to me, and especially if it's just one message, but if there are more uh, and more pieces of real data that we can sample, that's going to, uh, that's going to make our testing uh, as bulletproof as possible. There are so many situations where you go back to the supplier and say, you, you, the specification here, it says one <laughs> thing and your messages, they're not quite matching. Oh yes, well, uh, you haven't got the latest version of the specification and they run away and change the specification to match their messages and then send it to you and you realize that they edited it a couple of minutes before they sent you the new one. So yeah, <laughs> it's always a good one. Yeah. But also at the same time, it's not even that. Sometimes James, they, they won't even, they'll say, oh yeah, sorry. Well, that's what's coming out of the system. So yep. deal with it. Yep. And and that's what the engine's for. We can't, we have the ability to deal with it, even if the specifications say it's not what it's supposed to be. So we integrate no matter what. Yeah. Well, so you both say data is king and it seems like you have both experienced that. On the same note then, what are the trickiest aspects of EMR migrations? I feel like you might've just alluded to that, but, but what are the, the pitfalls and the tricky things to, to be aware of? I would say data quality as well is, um, the, the data that's actually stored in the EMRs, uh, moving them from the old version to the new version, finding duplicates, that kind of thing. We can help with that, um, uh, but it, it's a lot of the time it, it's actual problems with the data itself. Um, you can come in and find that there are issues with it, or you can find that the uh, data was, um, or the, the alterations were being done wrongly before so the wrong data is being put in a particular place so you'll be asked to come in and mirror exactly what was being done before um and then you start to do that and you realize that the old way was wrong um and you have to say well we should really be mirroring something that's wrong shall we change it um so i would say data quality really is is the biggest issue uh, i'd have to agree with james uh, also uh, paired with um your timeline because i, I realized that uh, there were several uh, projects where they said, start working on the interfaces now. I was like, okay, well, we have everything listening. Can you send us data? We're not ready for that quite yet. We have to kind of set up a couple things. Well, the interfaces are ready whenever you want to send the data and months and months pass and we're three months till go live and 
they still haven't given us the data and we're like, oh no, this is, this is really, really tight. We, I mean, we can do it, but it's, this is gonna be a little stressful. And they'll finally get us the data and hopefully it is uh, of good quality at that time, but um, it does take them a while to make sure that everything is correct before they send it to the interface. And um, a lot of times when we get to the interface, it's not the interface issue, but it's a data quality issue of, hey, you need to change this and that because no matter what the engine does, we can't make up data. So if it's missing, you, you, you gotta give it to us in some way. So. Um, they're, they're, uh, the, the data quality paired with a tight timeline of, hey, when are you going to actually give us that data is, uh, uh, can, can be a little frustrating and, and challenging. 